afternoon, everybody. I hope that all of you are having an unbelievable uh, weekend. This has turned out to be a very gorgeous day. Uh, I'm going to share what I have to share with you, and then I'm going to move on so that I can enjoy uh, this portion of my day. Uh, but I would be remiss if I didn't address things as I see them. And this is who I am. This is what and what what I've always done. Uh, and I hope that people are better for it. Uh, I get enough feedback from people whose lives I've touched to know that I make a difference. So that's not what this is about. This is about really truly being impactful in a way that you see the shift in the state of your people. Uh, I have always said that if the things that I have experienced in my life, the accomplishments, the uh, things that are considered to be exceptional, until they stop being an anomaly, until I stop being an anomaly, until what I have done becomes the norm, my work isn't done. I haven't succeeded at my purpose. And I know exceptional when I see it. I know phenomenal when I see it. And it may be hidden under struggle. It may be hidden under uh, oppression. It may be hidden under poverty. It may be hidden under miseducation, mass incarceration, and so many other things. But I recognize it. And I see it. And, and I believe in it. And, and, and those are the things that drive me. And when, I, when I'm able to lay my hands on something and see it come to uh, fruition, to prosper, uh, to elevate, to grow, to become empowered, uh, it is a blessing. It is a reminder that I'm on a journey and that uh, things are happening. Uh, as, as always, if you like what you hear, inspired by it, encouraged by it, challenged by it, uh, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. It's real simple. Um, for those of you who believe in the work that I've done in the community, uh, in the number of different ways that I have, show some love and show some support and donate. Uh, these things don't happen because we want them to wish them to. They happen because we get behind them and we resource them uh, and we follow through on them and we put them through and I've been doing that for 30 years plus. Look, as I prepare to do another workshop and conference uh, surrounding uh, epigenetics, childhood adverse, adverse childhood experiences, epigenetics, multi-generational trauma, and uh, how it relates to uh, the collective distrust of law enforcement in inner city communities, predominantly black communities. Now, it's something that I'm actually I'm actually partnered with Harris County Sheriff, Sheriff's Office to get done. Uh, I've actually gotten some support. Uh, there's a new regime that's been in for a while, and there are programs that they're actually trying to put together to make things happen. I haven't seen anything outside of the people that I work with. The guy who's over it all is a major in the sheriff's department. Uh, he's a black man. We've had uh, a couple of conversations. He's been to the last event that I was at and they are all in. They're the ones that's going to be hosting this coming one. But as I'm going through and I'm preparing it and I'm looking at current events because I want to talk about things that are current and relevant when addressing these issues and presenting uh, solutions and strategies and plans to the panel, uh, to the attendees, everybody from people within the communities, companies, and everybody's going to be at this event. And so the goal is to sit up and say, okay, this is what's, what is happening. This is the impact that it's having. And this is what has to be done to mitigate mar um, uh, and to change it, uh, to put a stop to it in some instances. And, but then you, you need to be able to make it relevant. You know, you need extant, highly recent data. And the thing is that I get, I got plenty of it because it's coming across my desk. Uh, 
we're killing ourselves, we're killing our children, we're killing our mates, um, we are killing ourselves. Uh, the suicide rates among blacks is spiking in almost every statistical category of blacks under the age of 45. And it, it, the younger you get, the more drastic it gets. Um, it's something that we need to be aware of. It's something that we need to be alert on. But there's another part that I have actually started the preliminary groundwork for what will probably be anywhere from 12 to 18 months of research, uh, studies, research, and peer-reviewed data, and a bunch of other things that I'm going to spearhead and take take upon to take upon myself. And hopefully I can get some others to join me because it's a lot of work, but we need to look at the impact that mental health is having on our homeless community, uh, specifically as it pertains to black men and how that impacts the home, how that impacts. That's, which, what you have to get out of is this idea that homeless people just appeared out of nowhere, that there's not a story behind each one of those inc incidents that they didn't emerge as someone. Let's take the average black male homeless person and you have to sit up and say, okay, at some point in time, uh, in most, almost all instances, this person was a little boy that had a home. You know, rarely are we seeing perpetual homelessness from children who grow up. Normally, we're seeing some pretty strong resilience in our children who are growing up in shelters. And unfortunately, that's a reality too that we really truly need to be dealing with. We are uh, acting, it's easy to, pretend those people don't exist. It's easy to pretend that there isn't black suffering if you're not a part of the suffrage. See, when you are living in uh, lower, lower middle to uh, moderate middle class, and in some of your instances, uh, upper middle class, the last thing you want to do is actually think about the people who didn't make it, which is the vast predominant uh, uh, portion of our population that they make it because then you have you're reminded of your responsibility you're reminded that hey it's not just about you so you, you have to pretend that they don't exist you have to pretend that they're not there you have to pretend they did something wrong you have to pretend you have to sit up and say stuff like uh if so and so and so can get out and get a job you can get a job you you have to sit up and you have to ignore the fact that a lot of this joblessness was engineered a lot of the poverty was engineered. But we're not even talking about solely joblessness and poverty. We're talking about mental health. And we're talking about the fact that we dropped the ball. We missed it. We didn't take care of it. We didn't deal with it. We looked around it, danced around it, hid it, pushed it under the carpet like so many other things we like to do when we don't want to have the discussions and we don't want to come up with real live uh, solutions to the problem. We pretend they don't exist. It's amazing how good we've become at doing it. And so with that being said, what I want to focus on now is the fact that we need to be doing a better job of resourcing growth, resourcing healing, resourcing uh, uh, mental, mental health resources for our uh, mental health and mental illness uh, sub subpopulation, and what I mean by that is <clears throat> there is literally a large number of our brothers, and in some instances our sisters, uh, although they'll have uh, some other avenues and 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 and. and uh, systems out there that'll kind of help them uh, when they run upon hard times. But the thing is that it's not the case for our brothers and sisters, our brothers. And so what happens is they'll get out there and they'll find themselves in a place where they are not being resourced. And what happens is they can't get what they need. They slip further and further down. And there are these policies that don't allow family members to come in and do the interventive uh, uh, engagement that's necessary to help them. So they sit up and they just drift and drift and drift until they get to the point where they are no longer in contact with their loved ones. They're out there on the street. And then 
ultimately end up either homeless completely or imprisoned because the only way that you can get them in a situation where you can truly have them in an environment where they can be treated and helped is if they harm someone or they harm themselves. This is something that we've got to do something about. So I'm doing research on that. But there are so many other things in our community that we're not doing. I am going to challenge my brothers and sisters to stand up. We can't continue to be doing what we're doing. We can't continue to pretend that. Because, see, that's one of the things that the system has done. That's one of the things that the right white racial color, right white racial caste system has been very effective at. And that is parading other blacks who have some semblance uh, of success in front of the masses and saying they did it why can't you and then if we're not careful we buy into that and we start looking at it as if there's this thing that we have that we've made it and we start to look down on them not realizing that it was you know maybe one or two things that kept us from being where they're at or maybe we do have this understanding but the knowledge of knowing how to make it over isn't so that we can get over and then look down at them it's so that we can get there and then reach back for them and reaching back isn't simply uh giving a speech writing a post all that stuff is good social media has a way of touching people healing people and doing a bunch of other things when you use it right but you've also got to be willing to say you know what i'm going in deeper i'm going to go talk to people i'm going to sit down with people i'm going to create this program to help people learn about finance i'm going to create this program to help people learn about home ownership i'm going to create this program to teach people how to homeschool their kids i'm going to all these different things are things that we can do and we need to be involved in and then when we see programs that literally have scientific proof that they work we need to be behind those programs because those are the things that are going to make the difference between our children remaining in last place and closing the wealth gap, closing uh, the disparities in special education uh, referrals and all these, closing the gap in incarceration and recidivism and all these other things that I consistently tell us about that we literally have the ability to impact, but we can't think we're going to impact it by asking them to fix it for us. They're not going to fix it because they want it broken because they benefit from its brokenness. And so, again, I'm going to challenge you to rise up and be a part of the solution. Uh, get involved. Share material that is influential, inspirational, encouraging and empowering. Those are the things we just said. Not this sensational stuff, not this gossip. Not all this stuff that everybody likes. You know, nothing wrong with laughing, nothing wrong with having fun, but you got to be empowered. We don't have the room to party. We can't be turning up to nothing. We need to be anchoring ourselves and preparing ourselves to fight this war that we are currently getting blown apart in. That's my challenge. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I challenge you guys to show some love, show some support, donate. Uh, and I mean donate I mean imagine just the cost of the research That's going to take place in the next 12 to 18 months the, uh, the programs that already exist Black Man Lee Restoring Ghettos for Forgotten Daughters um, uh, Music is Life uh, Our Think Tank Our Research Center All these different things have been going for decades And now we're challenging you To support that work On that note look I'm going to get ready to get out of here Again, also, for everybody that's been sending love, well wishes, and everything at the death of my mom, thank you. Uh, her burial has been planned for uh, the 21st. Don't ask me why they put it out. I let my sisters take care of that. Um, that's where it's at. And I, I'm assuming it's because uh, both sides of my family are from Louisiana, and it's giving everybody that's a way, chance to put in the whatever request they need to get the time off or whatever. But... Uh, nevertheless, thank you guys for the love and support. It means so much. I cannot uh, explain it or express it in words, but I feel it. I feel it um, in a way that it really makes me proud to be a part of what I'm doing because obviously uh, the people's lives I've touched care. And that means a lot to me. So again, thank you for that. On that note, um, I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to get up enjoy this day and i'll catch up with you guys later take care